Hello everyone and welcome to my new course, Motion Tricks. In this course, we'll master some advanced techniques of layer stylizations for 3D looking After Effects. Using them, we'll be able to achieve solid drawing and add some depth to our illustrations. We will also dedicate much time to animation principles to significantly improve the quality of your animations and to achieve smooth and organic movements. In this lesson, we'll cover the basic techniques of 3D stylization, which we'll use throughout the course. To take this course, you must have uh, some basic understanding of After Effects. So before hitting on practical points, let's discuss the interface. Let's configure the software so that your workspace looks similar to mine. If you don't know the interface well enough, this step will help you to perform better throughout the course. Let's make sure that our interface is neat, without any unnecessary panels, so that we can focus on what we are doing. For this course, I've prepared two layouts, classic horizontal and vertical, for cases when we will have to work with huge amount of layers, effects and properties. After I have positioned the panels the way I need, I save them in the menu. Go to Window, Workspace, Save as New Workspace. It's hard to imagine working in After Effects without any additional scripts. They enabled us to overcome the limitations of the software and to save a lot of time that we can invest in refining details. To ensure that you don't need to use too many different panels, we'll only use one extension, Motion Tools Pro by Motion Design School. We have added the link to download it in the course page. If you haven't used it yet, you will need to perform three steps. The first step is to download the extension from the link we provided. The second step is to download the ZXP installer by AE Scripts, which we'll use for the installation. After installing ZXP installer in your system, there are two ways for you to use it. To install a script or an extension, select After Effects from the list. Next, either open the downloaded ZXP from File Open, or simply drag the file from the folder and drop it in the interface window. The main indicator you did everything right is the notification about successful installation. If during the installation After Effects was opened, restart it. You can find all the extension in the menu Window, Extension. Motion Tool Pro features four panels. You can use different script sets, but we'll discuss this later. To begin, we need the first panel. The third step to start using the extension is to sign into it using the credential for signing in to Motion Design School website. That's because Motion Tools Pro is the main platform for all school scripts. It's a sort of access point for you to use all of them from one single panel. If you buy any new script from the school, you will be able to use it from here. Also, scripts will be automatically updated without any need for you to install any additional files. You can find out more on Motion Design School website. Let's take a few minutes to set it up. This is going to be our main tool throughout the course. If your screen is small, you will notice that it takes pretty much space on your screen. But that's not a problem, you can adjust the interface to match your needs. Click on the gear icon in the upper right corner. Here you can find the basic setting for all panels, which scripts are displayed and the interface settings. I'm going to reduce the cell size to 45 pixels. Then click the update button. You can reduce the spacing to 2 pixels to position the buttons closer to each other. When working, you will notice that we won't use some scripts at all. So we can remove them to make the interface cleaner. The distinctive feature of the new motion tool is that you can change the interface position of all scripts and widgets. If you click the edit button, you can change the position of the scripts by dragging them or make them smaller or bigger depending on your preferences. If you click on the free space in the interface, a new window with the list of all available scripts will open. If you select any item on the list, you can add it or remove it. Now we are finally ready to start working. Let's proceed with one of the main topics of this course, how to create a 3D look using simple layers in After Effects. Today we are going to achieve such a beautiful result using several different techniques. Also, we are going to focus on basic functionalities of effects and layer styles in After Effects. 
Let's create a new composition of a size of 3840 by 3840 pixels. It's a 4K resolution. Sometimes you'll use performance demanding effects, and if your computer is not powerful enough, the render might take quite a while. This issue will become noticeable in the second part of the course when we'll be creating big, complex scenes. If you experience any issues of this kind during this lesson, you can reduce the size of the composition by two. It will be enough for our classes. The next thing to do is to change the frame rate. For our animation, I will use 15 frames per second. It will help us in getting a more handmade look to our animation. Let's set the duration to 5 seconds. Let's name it main and click OK. Now let's talk about the settings of the project. You can open them from the menu File, Project Settings. Go to the Color tab. By default, Bit Depth is set to 8 bits per channel. In this course, we are going to use a lot of gradients and if this parameter is set to 8 bits, it may affect the quality of the final results. It creates chromatic distortion that are very noticeable on gradients and dark shades. We can partially fix that by setting the parameter to 16 bits per channel. That will increase the number of colors and improve the quality of the image. But be careful because it can also reduce the performance of your computer. Another available option is uh, 32 bits, but it doesn't make much sense to use it. 16 will be enough for this course. Also, you, you might have issues with what colors uh, you see on screen. We won't dig into the topic of different color spaces. The most important thing is to note that the best option for us is to set it to none. After Effects won't perform any additional color processing and the image we get after rendering the project will look the same as the image we see in our workspace. Working Gamma also influences what colors we see, but it also depends on what operating system you're working with, so let's keep it as it is. The last thing we need to check is the Expression tab. We'll use some extension in our project and it's recommended to set the Expression Engine to JavaScript. If you don't see this option, you're probably working on an old version of After Effects and you don't need to update this parameter. JavaScript will ensure uh, the maximum performance uh, in our project. That's it. Click OK. If you encounter any issues during this lesson, I've prepared for you the final result of our work in a separate folder called Done. Now let's create a simple circle in the center of the composition. In the upper part of the interface, click the Shape Layer tool and select the circle. Let's double click on the tool this way and we'll create a circle matching the size of the composition. Make sure that only fill is enabled without any stroke. You can activate or deactivate the fill and the stroke, common clicking on them. Then open the shape layer and set the circle size to 2000 pixels. Working with colors is one of the most important parts of the design process. The ability to select matching and harmonic combination of colors is an important skill for every designer. To make it easier for you, I have prepared a set of colors. All the colors I will use in this course are here. Let's drag and drop it to the new composition. Position it somewhere in the corner so that it doesn't interfere with our work. Set it to guide layer mode to ensure that uh, this layer won't be displayed during rendering. Now let's add the background for the composition. Let's use a shape layer. Select Rectangle tool and double click on it. Position the layer on the bottom of the comp and use the color picker to set the fill parameter. We're going to use different gradients and effects, so it doesn't really matter what the color of the circle is right now. Now let's add the four color gradient effect from the effects panel. If you don't see it here, go to Window, Effects and Presets. You can add an effect in two ways, by double-clicking on it if you have selected a layer, 
or by dragging and dropping the effect to any object in the viewport or layer. Actually, there's one more way. Select the layer, right click on it, and in the effects controls uh, panel, you will see the same list of effects. You can find it in the generate section. It's a simple effect that creates a gradient uh, made of four colors. Each color has its position parameter. You can change the position both in the effect or in the viewport. Let's select a color from our palette. The colors between this point will be blended uh, gradually. You can control the level of blending using the blend parameter. You may not notice any change when using the jitter parameter, but it really helps in cases where the color shades are too similar and you start seeing this kind of color distortion. It is especially noticeable on dark shades. But in our case, with uh, 16 bits, the difference will not be noticeable. The jitter parameter adds some uh, random noise to the colors, and this helps to get better results. The last two parameters control the visibility of the layer. Note that they control the visibility of the whole layer, not just of the effect. If you add any other effect, for example fill, and then reduce the opacity, it will affect everything. One more thing it's good to know is that the effect doesn't affect all the layers in the same way. And that is confusing for a lot of people. It's important for you to understand the difference of working with different types of layers. Currently, the effect is applied on a shape layer. If we start moving the layer in the composition, you will notice that the gradients don't move along with it, even if we change the scale or the rotation. The shape layer works as a sort of mask on this effect. The first method for moving the position together with the layer is to use expressions, but we'll dig into that in another lesson. Things change when we make a precomposition of the layer. Now the effect moves along with the layer. This is an important distinction that we must keep in mind. We can also apply the effect on a solid layer and create a mask on it. On solid layers, the effect works the same way that we just saw uh, with precompositions. Sometimes it's convenient to work this way, but at the same time we lose the ability to work with shape layers. So far our layer is static, so let's keep it as it is. The next step to achieve a 3D look is to add some light and shades to the image. Layer styles are another type of effects which you can see in the layer style section if you right click on the layer. Select inner shadow. Simple effects and style can be interchangeable, but each of them has its strength and weakness. Unlike effects, layer styles always move with the layer and are easier to use in creating a more complex stylization. Let's go through inner shadow in detail. This layer style inherits the shape of the layer and fills it with the color selected in the color parameter, with a specific blend mode and opacity. We can move this shadow through the distance specified here and also change the angle relative to which the shadow will be displayed. We can use the size parameter to blur its edges. We won't use any other parameters such as noise and choke. Global light enables us to manage the light sources for all the layer styles, but we'll talk about it later on the course. For now, we'll manage the angle of the light source manually. Let's make it a rule that we position the light source in the upper right angle. This means the shadow should be positioned on the other side. This gradient also helps to add depth and volume to the design. This can remind us a bit of a hard object and we need to ensure a more opaque and complex effect. So we'll need to create a shadow using other approaches later on. 
Despite its name, we can actually use Inner Shadow to create lighted areas. Let's change its color to white and Blend Mode to Overlay. This will help create interesting shades of undertones. Rotate it 180 degrees relative to the light source. Next, reduce the distance to eliminate the necessary light, but not too much because the lighted areas will be visible on other sides of the circle. And let's make it less intense by reducing the opacity for a softer result. In alternative, we can sometimes uh, use the layer style bevel and emboss. It creates both the source of light and the shadow. Most often it's used uh, with uh, small layers and since the size parameter is limited, it creates a linear and flat effect. We can create a really good light and shadow effect using another style called gradient overlay. It positions a simple gradient uh, within the layer, but it features more abilities than you may assume from a first glance. Beside parameters such as opacity and blend mode, which are typical for every style, we can also manage any number of colors, like uh, we do with shape layers. It's just like the gradient ramp effect, but in this effect we can manage only two colors. Gradient smoothness is not uh, uh, interesting for us. The angle controls the direction of the gradient relative to the center of the layer. Moreover, we can quickly invert the direction of the gradient and change its scale and position. Align with layer changes the coordinates of the gradient so that it matches the composition size and records its position, similar to shapes and effects. But these technical details are not that important for now. Radial is one more parameter that changes the style of the gradient, and it's ideal for our sphere imitation. Let's move it a bit using the offset parameter to the upper right corner so that it's closer to the light source. Like this. The undertones create the surface curvature, and by managing this gradient, we can manage both the light source and the surface. Let's intensify the light in the gradient settings. Afterwards, in order to merge these gradients with the color and the other light, let's change the blend mode to overlay. This way we can achieve more saturated colors. You can make it less intense by changing the value of the opacity to approximately 40. Uh, the result might differ a bit depending on the colors and parameters you set. Let's see what will happen if we start to disable the added effects and style. As you can see, the circle has become more 3D. Effects and style helps us to achieve great results without using any additional layers or compositions. It's a very simple but powerful method in stylizing our designs. However, at the same time, its possibilities are somehow limited. We can control the shape of the light or make the shape of the light and shadow more complex. That's why you shouldn't be afraid of adding more complementary layers. Let's add an additional glare so that we can better convey uh, the shape of this object. We can create a white ellipse shape and name it Reflection. By the way, if you haven't been using After Effects for too long, you will notice that uh, it positioned the anchor point of an object in the center of the composition. This isn't always convenient, so we can use the Move tool here in Motion Tools. But to avoid repeating this action each time, uh, go to After Effects Settings to uh, the General tab, where you can enable the checkbox uh, center anchor point in the new shape layer. This way, the anchor point will be automatically positioned in the center of the layer. And in the majority of cases, that's what we need. Now, let's rotate the layer. The fastest way to do it is to select the rotation tool by pressing uh, the W key. Afterwards, uh, position the layer closer to the brightness spot uh, of the circle. It looks a bit like a glass object. Unfortunately, there is no out-of-the-box technique to blur uh, the edge of the shape layers, so we'll use a blur effect. Inside effects, uh, in the Blur and Sharpen section, you can find a vast choice of tools for blurring. We'll mainly use the Fastbox Blur effect in this course. It provides a pretty good result and it's very effective. Uh, the Gaussian Blur effect creates a more beautiful and natural result, but if we apply a lot of effects, yeah, you start to experience a reduction in performance of your computer. 
If you have a slower device, the best way for you to create a blur is to use masks. You can create your shape layer, change the mode here to create a mask and draw a similar ellipse. In the mask settings, um, you will find a mask feeder parameter used for blurring borders. This way you can get a very similar result without uh, overpowering your computer. Actually, this method for creating blurs is extremely underestimated and does feature some strengths. Among the pen tools, uh, you can find uh, the Max Feather tool. It enables you to dynamically change the level of blurring on any side of the mask. We can position the controller anywhere and change its position. It's really cool. But this feature reduces the performance of the computer too, and unfortunately there's no possibility to animate the position of these points in After Effects. I'm sure that you can come up with some creative ideas on how to use this tool, but for now, a simple blur over the edges is good enough for us. We can talk about other methods of creating gradients and blurs a bit later. So, we have already achieved a nice looking sphere. To get even better results, I usually add some light glowing behind the layer. Again, you can create it using different approaches. For example, using styles such as Outer Glow. Unlike Inner Shadow, these styles create a transparent gradient around the layer. But if we create gradients using separate layers, this method won't work. That's why we are going to create another layer without any styles or effects. Let's duplicate the main layer using the shortcut Command D. Delete all styles and effects inside it. Make it white and position it behind the sphere. Just like with the glare, we can blur it using the fast blur effect. We can intensify the effect by increasing the size or scale of the layer. But we don't do this too noticeable because we don't want the glow to attract too much attention. We don't need the object to really glow, as we only want to create a barely noticeable effect to ensure a bit of contrast. Excellent. The last step is to add some depth to the sphere. One of the best ways to add depth to an object is to correlate them with other objects. You can place other objects around the scene with different sizes. You can even place one object in inside the other and this will intensify the transparency and blurring effect and help you achieve better results. Let's use the same circle. Rename it to Inner Circle. Delete all the effects from it. By the way, the fastest way to delete all of the effects from a layer is to use the shortcut Command Shift E. Place it above the main layer and after make it smaller. We don't need to create all those effects and styles to add the volume to the new circles. We'll use blending modes for that. Use the overlay mode. It's one of the most effective modes uh, for what we are trying to accomplish. All we need to do is to change its color from bright to a darker tone. I think gray could work well here with a darker tint. Now we need to add some blur to this layer. Again, let's use the same effect, fast box blur. Like this. Now we can play with the configuration of the parameters of the main circle, like the gradient opacity and the level of lighting in inner shadow. This is the result we are looking for in this lesson, and I have to say I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Blending modes make a significant contribution to the effects we apply to a layer. Let's discuss the most essential ones and how they can be applied. We won't dig too deep into the mathematics, we'll simply have a look at the effects they produce. In a new composition, create a simple shape layer. Set the color to a repeated black and white gradient. These blending modes are more noticeable on black and white colors. Additionally, to help manage the gradient, we can add the exposure effect. This will enable me to control the darkest and brightest areas, enlarging and reducing the tint's range. Afterwards, I led uh, to the composition any gradient from our project. Now, let's have a look at it. 
The first three modes are not that interesting for us, as they won't produce any significant result. Let's start with Darken. You will immediately notice that the color only remains the same in the brightest area. When it starts becoming grey, it gets darker. With this we can create a cool effect by showing and hiding the gradient, which is really just the result of the rough blending of this mode. By changing the gradient shades, you can see how it changes the way colors blend with each other. We can achieve the opposite effect using the lighten mode. Here the colors in darker areas stay the same, while the brighter areas become even brighter. And even more interesting results can be achieved by using Multiply and Screen. In these modes, semitones blend better as they don't produce very rough borders. With Multiply, the colors simply become darker in the darkest areas. With Screen, bright colors become even brighter. The next two, Color Burn and Color Dodge, not only blend bright and dark tints, but also intensify color combination. This way, colors become more saturated and contrasting, when you use these modes, it might be a good idea to avoid really dark or really bright colors. You can get a similar result by using the opposite blend modes Linear Burn and Dodge. They saturate the colors too, but the effect they produce is softer in the brightest and darkest areas. If you work with bright and dark colors separately, like when you add glares and shadows for instance, you can use these modes. They will help you add more natural and interesting tints that you could only achieve by working with the opacity layer. If you are working with uh, full illustration, we can use another set of modes. This fourth set blends color evenly, both light and dark tints. Soft light reminds me a bit of the combination between multiply and lighten. It evenly lightens and darkens the layer tints while preserving the saturation and the original colors. Another blending mode I love is overlay. This one also intensifies colors by making them more saturated. With hard light, colors look even more saturated and only become bright or dark to a specific extent. If we try and change the contrast of the color gradient, this becomes more noticeable. The remaining blending modes change the level and extent of blending between layers, but the basic ones will be enough for our work. By experimenting with different modes, you can achieve really cool results. To ensure you always get harmonic tints, uh, just be careful uh, with the darker and brighter areas. When you're working with illustrations of different colors and light intensity, it isn't always easy to figure out how you can blend your layers to get the best final results. That's why most often you simply need to try out different options to see how they look and select the one that best matches what you're looking for. Usually the most effective modes are overlay and soft light, because even with really bright and dark areas, you still get nice saturated colors. This allows you to avoid colors blending too roughly or straightforward, which usually just result in a more artificial looking object. Still, don't be afraid to experiment with all of the different blend modes. Now let's consider a few other methods to create gradients and animate them. These gradients we are creating will be useful later on throughout the course, so let's save them by using different compositions. Let's copy the four color gradient effect from the main layer, create a new composition in 4K, set the frame rate to 15. All the other settings can remain the same from before. Let's add a rectangle layer uh, the size of the composition and paste the gradient onto it. As you can see, we are limited a specific number of colors, but we can always blend it with another layer containing other colors. Duplicate the layer using the shortcut uh, Command D. We can change its colors. Select the ones from the palette. Let's keep it like this. Now we blend the layers. I would like to preserve the tint of all the colors and simply make them lighter. Let's try with the light and blend mode. All the other blending modes will just brighten this too much, 
while making colors too saturated and contrasting. Let's move the colors around and see what we get. With this mode, uh, when we move one color closer to another, we get some beautiful bright tints. We wouldn't get this result if we simply made the layer more transparent, as colors will just become faded and dirty looking. Also, this effect is easy to animate. Look how cool this color combination looks. Let's try to animate the color's position. Move them from one place to another. Use simple linear keys, like this. The issue with animating these parameters is that we can control the curvature of the movement, as you would with the position of the layers. You can loop the movement using the expression loop out. Let's reveal all the keyframes on the layer with the U key. To add an expression to a setting, hold the Alt key and click on the stopwatch icon to the left from the name of the setting. You can enter your expression manually in this field on the right, or you can automatically insert an expression from the list of available ones using this button here. It's on the property tab. Loop out features many different options for different types of looping, but we won't discuss them today as we'll get back to this question over the next lessons. We can also quickly add an expression for looping using the script from Motion Tools. Select all animated settings and click on this button. The type of looping will be added if you hold the Alt or Option key pressed and uh, click on this button again. If we add uh, ease to our keyframes, uh, the animation will become smoother, and most of the time this will be good enough, but we want to achieve a more random looking movement. Instead of complicating our current animation by adding more keys, we can use another expression, like Wiggle. It adds a chaotic movement to each setting. Let's replace the current expression with Wiggle, and inside the brackets we enter two numbers. Let's enter 1, and after the comma, 1000. The first one is the animation rate, and the second one is the amplitude of the movement in pixels. To put it differently, the speed of the animation and the distance that each color will move. Let's decrease the rate to 0.5. It looks better now. Copy the text of the expression and paste it on the other settings. Yes, now the movement is looking much better. Now let's prolong the keys uh, to the end of the composition to ensure that there is no pause in the animation. This way we can add more layers, which means more colors, and make the gradient even more complex. Using motion tools you can save the expressions for the future. Click anywhere in the interface to open the panel with the list of scripts. At the very bottom you will see two tabs, Add Expression and Execute Script where we can create and store any expressions and scripts. Let's select Expression Template. We can name it Wiggle. Next, in the Expression field, we enter the value we used before. But instead of 1000, let's write 500, so it's more universal. After that, click Save to configure this change, and click the button Add to add it to the panel. In this course, we'll often use different extensions, and this is one way you can save them. We can select any settings and add it by clicking on the button. On the lesson webpage, we also added uh, an additional Wiggle version for looped animation. You can save it to your library too. Let's consider some more technique to create the gradients. Previously, we manually controlled how the gradient looks and how it was animated. But we can make the design and animation semi-automatic by using other effects. For this, our process will be slightly different. Let's create a new composition. As usual, we can create a background layer. For the gradient, we'll use some effect to create some noise. In the Effects panel, unfold uh, the Noise and Grain section. Fractal noise and turbulent noise are visually very similar. 
Their main difference is that with fractal noise, it's easier to loop the animation. However, it's more demanding in terms of computer performance. If performance is important to you, I would recommend use turbulent noise. By default, uh, these effects produce quite detailed noise. We won't consider all the parameters as there are too many of them. To achieve the results we are looking for, we'll only need to change some parameters. For example, we can slightly reduce complexity. Next, on the Transform tab, let's increase scale. Something like this. We can also increase the contrast a bit to ensure that the gradient isn't too uniform. Now it's important for us to see how the animation will look, as the foundation of this effect will be the blending of several noise maps with different detailed levels. It's pretty similar to what we did uh, with the color gradients. On the sub settings tab, we can move these noise layers and rotate them. But we can get the most interesting results by using the evolution parameter. This way, we won't be simply moving the light and dark areas as before, but we'll have them instead disappear and appear in different places over the timeline. It's really hard to achieve this result using other methods. Let's animate it right away and loop the movement. Set the first key at the beginning of the composition and set the second one at the end. Make a full rotation of 360 degrees or simply enter one in the first value. Afterwards, select the Cycle Evolution checkbox. With the value 1, our animation will be looped. And if you don't like the current pattern, we can always change it as many times as we need using the seed parameter. But the gradient is still far from what we want it to be. This effect features many parameters that can help develop and style our gradient. But this time, we'll go for the simpler way and add the blur effect. Let's create a new adjustment layer and name it Blur. Let's set the Fastbox Blur effect and blur the image so that it looks more uniform and reminds us a bit of how gradients look. We can increase the contrast and we can even change the type of fractal noise to achieve more interesting results. Depending on the type, you'll need to reduce the contrast to see the result. I like this current style. Now let's add a color to it. When working with black and white maps, there are effects like tint that will basically add two tints uh, which replace black and white colors and the tints between them. The Triton effects add a third transitional tint which can help us uh, in creating a more expressive palette. But if that's not enough for you, there's the CC toner effect that adds two extra supplementary colors. But I would like to pay more attention to the colorama effect. This is a powerful tool uh, with some presets that can help us achieve more complex results. It doesn't just change a specified number of colors like the other effects. Instead, it changes the entire color range to any other with an unlimited number of colors and different blending modes. You can add your own palette to it. Let's choose one of the simple presets with a small number of colors. Ideally, we only need three, and in case they're not enough, uh, we can click anywhere on this wheel and in this new window, select our colors from the palette using the color picker tool. Like this. Let's place three colors at an equal distance between them. If your result is too extreme, you can always reduce the contrast, increase the scale, and blur the image more. Essentially, there's an infinite number of variations on how your gradient can look like.
it looks great. And now it's time to get back to our sphere and add our new gradients to it. Add any gradient composition to this composition. To do this, we'll use the main circle as a mask. One of the easiest ways to do it is to use track mat. If you don't see this column, you can add it by right clicking on the column headings. Right here. With previous versions of After Effects, we will need to place this layer under the mask layer. Now, in the track menu, open the list and select Alpha Mat. But in the new After Effects 2022 23, the track mat mechanism has changed. Now, both layer and mask can be placed anywhere in the composition. From the drop down list, we can choose the layer we want to use as a mask. We can choose the mask type between Alpha Mat and Luma Mat with this bottom to the right. And with the button next to it, we can invert the mask. Let's make sure everything works well. Now we can quickly replace the gradient by dragging other composition onto the layer while holding the Alt or Option key. Using precompositions is convenient and fast, and it has its own advantages. It helps us to create complex effects and adjust them easily. Also, compositions help with After Effects caching. Any change in the composition forces the software to re-render all the details inside it, and this impacts the performance. Organizing different effect sets uh, onto different compositions helps After Effects uh, to cache them. Later, uh, when we animate the overall composition, this will help to avoid re-rendering them. Also, with every sophisticated and complex scenes, it can help to pre-render the effects to a video file and use that instead of processing all layers and effects every time inside After Effects. But let's look at it from another angle. All of these methods have one major drawback. We use many layers and when complexity increases, we'll have even more. It's difficult to transfer these objects from project to project. The built-in function animation presets for saving effects can help us with this. But in order to use it, we need to have all the necessary effects and styles on one layer. Let's look at the last styling option uh, that can fit on one layer. This approach is very similar to what we did earlier. Copy the main circle with its effect and the background layer onto a new composition. Turn on the visibility of the circle. We already ensured its volume using layer styles and added color using the four color gradient effect. We can also quickly animate the colors with the wiggle expression. Let's add a little glow with the outer glow style. Here we cannot change the position of the light source in it. The glow will always be even around the borders of the layer. Make sure to use white. Increase the size and then decrease the opacity to make it less intense. Great, all that's left is to add a glare and some more depth. To do this, we'll use two new effects. For the glare, let's add a circle effect to the layer. It's a simple circle on a layer as an effect, but you can still blur it and add a blend mode to it. It doesn't have any very complex shape, but it can come handy for simple tasks and small details. And to ensure the extra depth, let's add the CC glass effect. As the name implies, it creates a glass effect and it gives any object a more complex shape due to additional reflections. Let's change the light type to point light. This is another way to add a new light source. It doesn't have the usual blending modes, but it does have shading settings. That's why with this effect, working with the edges of the layer, we can achieve a more interesting result than any other method. 
Let's increase the height to 100 and the softness to more than 100. In addition to the light source, we will get lighter or darker areas around the edges. So it becomes similar to what we did by duplicating the layer. This is more noticeable in small layers. In addition, the object can become smaller or larger than it was. But the excess can be trimmed by reducing the displacement to zero. We can reduce the brightness a little by using similar light intensity and light height parameters. At the same time, you can increase contrast on the edges by increasing the roughness parameter. And slightly reducing the specular one. For each gradient, the optimal set of parameters may differ. As a result, we need to get a balanced and soft palette. Sometimes this combination of effects and styles can lead to bugs. When you move the layer, it can disappear or get a little glitchy. Usually the problem comes from the noise parameters. You can increase the noise and jitter by a very small value above zero, to one or slightly less. If that doesn't help, you can also increase other similar values in effects, as many of them that creates gradients have these parameters. The viewport resolution can also affect the result, because in most cases we only see the correct picture by setting the full quality. However, this can seriously reduce performance. In these cases, it might be best to occasionally render a single frame from the menu Composition, Save Frame as, File. The main disadvantage of this method is that uh, this combination of effects and style can really slow down the rendering and animation playback. On the other hand, we can easily save these sets of effects in one layer as a preset and quickly use it in other projects. To do this, open the layer, unfold the effects and styles. Let's select all the effects we need. Afterwards, go to Animation menu. The Save Animation Preset item will become available. We can save it anywhere on the computer, but in order for the preset to be displayed in After Effects menu, it's best to save it in the User Preset folder. It's usually in Documents, in the folder Adobe, Your Current Version of After Effects, User Preset folder. The effect can be called 3D Style. After that, your preset should show up under the Animation Presets category, User Presets. If you don't see it from the menu, you can manually update the entire list of effects and presets. If that doesn't work, just restart After Effects, otherwise you most likely just saved it in the wrong folder. Now, no matter how strange the shape we create, we can add all the presets effect and styles with this preset. It looks cool, but it isn't always convenient. When you add these effects to shape layers, their position will always be the same. And only with different layer scales and composition sides, the result will look different. These presets don't take into account all individual parameters, so each case needs to be manually corrected. This means the many values of radius, sides, and other scales also need to be adjusted. Therefore, uh, especially for this course, Motion Design School and I have prepared something special for you. Each set of effects is time consuming to recreate, and the tools available for saving them are not perfect. So we have created a special set of motion tweak scripts for this, which you can use during the course. In our course, there will be a separate layout for Motion Tools Pro. In it, we have automated the most complex parts of our techniques and rigs, creating objects, styling, adding effects, and so much more. This will save you from the boring repetitive actions and let you focus on the important details. But before we start using it, we need to understand and master all the techniques manually. To achieve the best results, we should understand all of our tools and know them from the inside out, so that we are able to recreate them from scratch. Let's sum it up. There are a lot of ways to achieve the desired effect, and I'll be glad to hear about any other ways you'll discover throughout the course. 
It's difficult to single out the best of them, each method is interesting in its own way and can be useful in our work. Everything depends on your current tasks. No matter what techniques you use, you always go through four stages. Create a simple foundation, it can be any shape. Next, fill in the object with some cool looking gradients. Afterwards, you can add light and shadow to ensure its volume. And as the last step, you add depth, which in our case can be achieved by another blurry object inside of the main one, for example. Then you just need to handle the details and find an harmonious combination of effects. When practicing, don't be afraid to experiment and play with the effects. You need to train your eyes and learn to quickly see the optimal ratio of effects. I hope all we have learned so far was valuable for you. See you in the next lesson.